This is our first lesson of chapter 1, Solving Linear Equations. Let's get to work. Given negative 6x is equal to 42, to solve for x, we want the x to be by itself. How do we make the x by itself? Get rid of the negative 6. The best way is to divide by negative 6. Once you do that, negative 6 here, negative 6 here cancels out. Whatever you do on the left side of the equal sign, you've got to do it on the right side of the equal sign. Then we get x is equal to, and if we were to simplify 42 over negative 6, we get negative 7, and that's our answer. Okay. Let's do another example with one additional number. And here's the example. If we have 5x minus 3, is equal to negative 33. Again, we want to solve for x, but this time <clears throat> we're not going to divide by 5 first. Rather, we're going to go ahead and get rid of that negative 3. How do we do it? We add 3. Because negative 3, positive 3, cancels each other out. However, once again, whatever you do on the left side, you got to do the same thing on the right side, meaning add 3 to it. Then we get 5x left over. Negative 33 plus 3 will give us negative 30. Once again, just like we did here, to solve for x, we need to get rid of that 5. And to do that, we're going to divide by 5 on the left side. And we're also going to divide it by 5 on the right side. By doing so, the 5 on the left side will cancel out, and we're left with x equals to, once again, if we simplify negative 30 over 5, we get negative 6 as our final answer. Okay? All right, now let's do another one that combines a lot more than what we did with the first two examples. Here's the question. Negative 3, parentheses, negative 2x plus 20 plus 8, once again, parentheses, x plus 12 equals to 70, uh, 92. So there's our question. So before we do any simple, um, before we get rid of anything on the left side and the right side, we're going to take that negative 3 and the 8 distribute it into the parentheses. So take the negative 3, multiply into everything into the parentheses, we end up getting 6x minus 60. Next, we're going to take that 8, plug it into the parentheses once again, and we get 8x plus 96 equals 92. And we're going to combine the like terms, meaning we're going to simplify just the left side. If I take the 6x and the 8x combined, we end up getting 14x. And then if I were to combine negative 60 and the positive 36, we get pos uh, positive 96, we get positive 36 equals 92. Now that we've simplified everything that's on the left side as much as we can, we're going to start getting rid of things so that we can solve for x. First step, let's get rid of that 36. Again, you've got to get rid of that 36 first before you get rid of that 14 in front of the x. So we're going to go ahead and subtract 36, subtract 36 left and the right. These will cancel out. We're left with 14x on the left side. 92 minus 36 will be 56. Last step, to solve for x, once again, we need to get rid of that 14. And the way to do that is divide it by 14 to get rid of that like that. If you divide it by 14 on the left side, you need to go ahead and divide it by 14 on the right side. Then we have x left over. Once again, 56 over 14, or 56 divided by 14, is 4. And 
That's our final answer. So these are three examples of uh, linear equations, where we, meaning straight lines, where we solve for the variable x. Let me do a couple more. All right, here's our fourth example. If we have x plus y over z minus a equals b, and if the question says to solve for y, what do we do? Well, since we want to solve for y, we need to get rid of everything else, meaning the x, z, and the a. What's important is that you can't get rid of the x or the z first. You've got to get rid of the a first. So we're going to go ahead and do the opposite of what we have, meaning if we have negative a here, we're going to add a positive a. However, if we add a positive a on the left side of the equal sign, we have to go ahead and add a positive a on the right side of the equal sign. So then, this and this will cancel each other out, leaving us with x plus y over z equals b plus a. Next. Again, to solve for y, we need to get, get rid of either the x or the z first. Once again, you have to get rid of the z first. The x, when it's added to the y, it's attached. So you cannot get rid of the x until you get rid of the z first, which is in the denominator. So how do we get rid of the z? We're going to multiply by z on the left side. Because if you multiply by z, which is the same thing as z over 1, the z on here and the z on the bottom will cancel each other out. Since we multiply by z on the left side, I'm going to multiply by z on the right side as well. However, if I just go ahead and multiply by z like this, what we did was, we multiply the z to the a only, which is not what we want to do. We want to go ahead and multiply the z to the entire thing on the right side of the equal sign. How do we do it? You need to go ahead and add the parentheses. Then, what do we have left over? On the left side, we have x plus y left over. On the right side, we have b plus a, quantity b plus a, times z, left over. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and take the z and distribute it in here. So we get bz plus az. Notice I, write, I wrote the b first before the z, although it doesn't matter whether it's bz or zb, it's preferred to write uh, these in alphabetical order. Also, you could put the az in the front or the bz, not a big deal. All right, we have one, one more step to do. Once again, keep in mind, y is what we're trying to solve for the y right here. To, get rid of, to solve for y, the last step we have to do is get rid of that x, and we can do that by subtracting the x, which of course will get rid of that x on the left side of the equal sign. If I subtract by x on the left side, I need to go ahead and subtract the x on the right side of the equal sign leaving us with y is equal to bz plus az. And of course, you can't combine az and x, so we're just going to go ahead and simply put minus x at the end. And there you go, folks. That's the answer. Meaning, if we, had, if we started with this original equation, and if the question asks us to solve for y, that's what the y is equal to. Here's our fifth and last example of the lesson. 5x minus 9 is equal to 11x plus 3. Okay. Unlike the other examples we've done, for this particular example, we have x on the left side of the equal sign and x on the right side of the equal sign. So we're going to have to combine the x's first before we should or we can uh, combine the numbers. So let's go ahead and subtract 5x on the left side because that will get rid of the x on the left side of the equal sign. Then I could go ahead and subtract the 5x on the right side of the equal sign as well. Let's take a look. We have negative 9 left over on the left side. 11x minus 5x is 6x plus 3. OK, 
keep in mind, x is what we're trying to solve for. So here, instead of dividing it by 6 first, we need to go ahead and subtract the 3. Because if I subtract the 3, that will get rid of that. Then I need to go ahead and subtract the 3 on the left side also, giving us negative 12 on the left side of the equal sign, and of course the 6x on the right side of the equal sign. Our last step to solve for x, we're going to go ahead and divide it by 6, which will get rid of the 6 on the right side of the equal sign. But we need to go ahead and divide that by six, divide it by 6 on the left side of the equal sign as well to keep everything equal. Then I have le x left over on the right side and negative 12 divided by 6 or negative 12 over 6 is equal to negative 2. Okay, so you can leave it like that. Negative 2 equals x or if you're more comfortable rewriting it as x equals negative 2, that's okay also. So, that's our lesson for Unit 1, Section 1, which is solving linear equations. And in 1.2, we'll be doing other topics as well. So come on back and check out, your, uh, check out our next video, please.